All right, another area of preparation we can be doing while epoxy is curing is prepping the nose cone. Now this is made out of polypropylene, um, and you can see it's got a lot of flash here on the seams. Now polypropylene makes for a really, really strong but light nose cone. It's really tough stuff. The problem is it doesn't accept paint very well. In fact, it doesn't accept much of anything very well. Um, fillers don't stick to it well, glue doesn't stick to it well, paint doesn't stick to it well. So we've got to do some preparation here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just take my hobby knife and cut off that excess flash. Okay, something else to consider, and this is going to depend on how you decide to build the rocket. Um, if you're going to build this the way the instructions show with an open payload bay, um, you won't need this eyelet here on the uh, nose cone because the shock cord and the parachute are going to attach to the base of the payload bay. If you are going to build this kind of like the original um, rock sim files show that this originally was just a long rocket with a nose cone at one end and, and fins at the other without a payload section. Um, then you'll need to attach the shock cord and the parachute to the nose cone. I would not recommend using this eyelet. For the size of the nose cone it's not very thick and I would be, just be concerned that this would have a tendency to break. Instead, what you can do is drill a hole through here, and I would suggest um, about a quarter inch hole on either side of this. Give yourself lots of room in between, and then you can stick some Kevlar cord through that and make a loop to which you can put on the shock cord and parachute and everything else. That's going to give you a stronger connection than I think this little eyelet will be. All right. Um, other manufacturers that make nose cones like this um, will give it a bigger eyelet, and those seem to work fine. This just seems a little bit small for the nose cone size. Okay, so now I've got my ridge trimmed off here. Now, depending on your particular nose cone, you may even have some troughs in here as well. And really, the thing to do next is to use some medium grit sandpaper and just sand this all around. Um, the, the nose cone actually does have some texture to it which might help paint it. Uh, but what I'm going to end up doing with this is first painting it with a plastic bonding primer. And these are made specifically for these hard to paint plastics. And it gives a layer that will stick to the plastic and also allow paint to stick on top of that. But to help it hold on better, it's nice to have a rougher surface here. So medium grit sandpaper, 100 to 120, somewhere in there. And I'm just going to sand this whole thing. And I'm going to do it off camera because that's really boring to watch. So this is what it looks like after I've sanded it with 120 grit sandpaper. Um, you can still see a little bit. These are mold marks here. And they're mostly sanded down. There's a little bit of a groove here yet along the length on both sides. Um, and there are a couple of options. You can, one, ignore it. Uh, two, you may end up, if it's shallow enough, if you put the um, primer on this in a couple of coats, it will probably fill that in. And that's usually what I end up doing with it. Um, I'm, not, I'm generally not concerned about having the perfect finish on my rockets. I'd rather just have them look good and fly. Um, you can try some epoxy putty or some modeling putty. However, uh, those things probably aren't going to stick any better to the plastic than just about anything else. But if you wanted to try those, you could. Um, I'm actually going to give this a try. This is uh, plastic modeling putty, and it's meant for making contours like this. 
but it's really meant to be used on wood or on polystyrene. And I have the feeling it's just going to flake off of this. But I'll give it a try. I'll let you know if it worked or not. Um, but otherwise, if it doesn't work, I'm just going to use the, the primer on this to fill it in and then go for there. Go from there. So my forward centering ring is mostly cured. It's cured enough that I can handle it here. And now I want to do a few experiments with fits. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just put the aft centering ring on. I'm going to ignore the middle one for the moment. And I've got it here at the, the recommended eighth of an inch or so past the aft end of the motor mount. And now if I put this in, and here I'm going to try to gently pop this in there. There we go. And for the moment, I'm just going to take that Z clip off. Okay. So what I am looking for here is I want that centering ring to be right there on the edge. Okay, so at this point, if I move this all the way around, the centering ring there is right at the edge of the fin slot. Okay, and then this needs to be in at about an eighth of an inch for the um, motor retainer to work properly. So I'm just going to go around here and make sure everything is reasonably straight. Okay. Uh, but now this tells me right about where this aft ring is going to be in relation to the body tube. In fact, I can make a few marks here. Okay, because what I'm getting to here is I want my middle ring it is on to be exactly here where that top edge of the fin goes. Okay. And that's what I marked up here. And so it's looking like everything is fitting the way it is supposed to. Alright, I've made up some more 15 minute epoxy here and what I'm going to do is put this in a line forward of the centering ring but you'll notice right now my centering ring is behind the line so this is going that line is going to be eventually right at the aft edge of that centering ring and what I want to do is push this into the epoxy Here, I'm just going to run this in a line around it. And then when this pushes forward, it will automatically make its own fillet. So now I'm just going to twist this as I move it up. And I keep doing this until I find that mark again. Okay, right there. I move that back. And now I'm going to try as much as I can to 
make sure that's nice and straight. And what I don't want is a fillet in the aft part of this, at least not yet. And the reason for that is if I have a fillet in here, the corners of the fin tabs may get caught against it, and I won't get as good of adhesion along the body tube as I would without it. Now, we will put in some fillets later on here. And this is where I'm going to depart a little bit from the instructions. Um, in the instructions, they have this completely constructed motor mount, and then that's placed in, and then the fins are glued on. What I am going to do here is after these two rings have completely cured, I'm going to go ahead and mount this into the rocket and then leave the aft end off, or at least unglued so I can pull it off. And that's going to give me access to the edges of the fin tabs as they go in here, so I'll be able to see exactly where they're gluing in and I'll be able to put fillets not only along the fin tabs and the motor mount, but the fin tabs and the body tube on the inside. And then we can also put the normal uh, fillets on the outside along the fins. And then while we have this still open and this piece not glued in, I'm going to flow some epoxy down into here um, which will give us both a fillet on the motor mount and a fillet on the aft end of the middle ring here. All right, so I'm just going to do a quick check here. Make sure we're as square as we can be. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I am going to let this cure, probably overnight, and come back to it later on. The epoxy has cured on my first two centering rings here, and I'm going to do another dry fit. So I'm going to slide that in. Okay, I'm going to bring that centering ring just to the front edge of the fin slot. Okay, we're going to go ahead and slot these in. Okay, you can see the fin coming in here, and that's going to meet the engine mount. So that's fitting there. And now I want to see where we are with this one. So I'm going to slide the aft ring in there. Okay, and it's actually a little bit closer to flush than we have planned on. This will still work though, so do not despair if you're in this same type of configuration. Right, I may need to use the screw here to pull this back out. Okay, but what I want to end up doing here is once we have all of the fins in, So once everything's in like that, um, before I put the final ring on, and after I've glued in the motor mount so far, what I'll be able to do then is epoxy all the way around the inside of this so I can have a fillet here on the internal surface of the body tube, on the external surface of the engine mount, and also, I'll be able to run some epoxy all the way down to form a fillet around the aft side of the middle centering ring.
which I intentionally left unfilleted in order to allow the fins to fit correctly. All right, so everything dry fits okay. Pull these back out. Okay, so next the instructions call for a bead of epoxy approximately at this point um, so that when all this is in, uh, it's going to push it forward here. Now if this were just a little bit longer, we could do this in two stages where I could put some epoxy way up in here, slide that, in, hang this out, put another bead in here. Uh, but that's just not going to work for us here because of the relatively short length between these two centering rings. There's just not enough room to get in and do a second bead while this first centering ring has been inserted. So what I'm going to do then is make up some epoxy all right, and put a bead just below where this will eventually set. So when this is finished, the ring is going to be up here. I'm going to put my bead of epoxy down here. I'm going to measure that. Okay. So about ten and a half inches there, or if you're metrically inclined, about 26 centimeters. And so I'm going to use a dowel to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make up some epoxy and then we'll come back and put this in. I've made up a fairly generous portion of 15 minute epoxy here. And I've got a long wooden dowel. And I've marked it over here at 26 centimeters, which is going to put it below uh, where the forward uh, ring is going to slide in, so that will cause the ring to slide through this and push it forward. And again, this is a bit of a departure from the book, or from the instructions, I should say, um, in that they install all the rings first, make the complete motor assembly, and then stick it in all at once. Okay, now the key thing in this case is we don't want to get any epoxy in the fin slots. Alright, so I'm going to put my thumb here at my mark. Get a little glob of epoxy on here. Careful that it doesn't roll off. I'm going to stick this in up to my mark and then kind of paint this around the inside. Now I can't really show the inside of this as I'm doing it, I just don't have enough clearance. All right, but I'm just going to go ahead and get another glob here. And I'm going to repeat this until I've used up all of my epoxy. Part of the reason that I'm using the 15 minute epoxy here is it's going to give me some more working time because I'm going to want to be able to put the motor mount in and re, uh, refit the fins, still dry fit, to make sure that everything is aligned properly. And that way if I need to, I can readjust where the engine mount is in relation to the fin slots and the fins themselves and everything else. One more application here, I think. Just a little 
bit left. I'm going to call that good. So now I'm going to take the engine mount once more. I'm going to slide this in, turning it back and forth as I go so I evenly distribute the epoxy. And once more I'm going up until I just see the edge of the centering ring in the fin slot. And here I'm just going to put one fin back in just to make sure that it is where it needs to be. Okay, and then once more I'm going to dry fit this. Now it's trying to move things a little bit there. And this is again why I use the 15 minute epoxy. So I've got a little wiggle room in here to reposition as needed. Okay, so that's going to leave me with right about an eighth of an inch of clearance, which is what we aim for. Okay, so I'm going to take that back out. Okay, and I'll just pull on that engine tube so that it's snug against the fin there. Take that back out. the same amount of clearance all the way around. Okay. And now I'm going to let this one cure. There we go. So now you can see down inside there. And the epoxy has all been pushed forward into a fillet. Um, there's kind of a shallow spot there and I may be able to rotate that around. So here I am just turning the entire assembly. And I'm hoping that's going to distribute that fillet better. So now if we look down inside once more. Okay, it's almost there. I'm going to go ahead and do that some more. There we go. Okay, so now I've got an epoxy fillet all the way around the inside of this. It's a little bit heavier on one side than the other, but that's okay. Uh, using the printed instructions, what we would have done is kind of the same thing that I did here, but I would put the epoxy in from the front end and then push this up and then apply a fillet to this. Uh, in this case, I don't need to apply that fillet because I put enough epoxy in here to push a fillet forward. So one of the nice things about this kit, having a 4 inch diameter body tube and relatively short length, is I can reach down in here and completely access the content. So I can get to that forward uh, centering ring, I can get to my shock cord anchor, which means it's going to be a whole lot easier if I need to change out the shock cord. Uh, and this is uh, one of the reasons I really like this as a level one certification kit, because you don't have to worry about getting it all right the first time. If you need to add a little bit of a fillet there, um, work on the shock cord, whatever, this is a lot more forgiving than say uh, a 2.6 inch kit. Okay. Now if we look down in this end, um, there's no epoxy in there, which is good. We don't want any epoxy stuck in those slots. And again, we've got the centering ring still flush. Looks like it shifted just a little bit there. All right now it's flush where we had it. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and check that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let this cure, and then we'll come back and put the fins on. Now, if you recall, I had applied some model putty here to the nose cone to try and fill in the seams. And so this is what it looks like after it dries. I'm going to go back off camera here 
and re-sand this with some uh, 150 grit sandpaper to smooth this out again. And if all works as planned, the only thing left will be a, a small line of the light gray here where it has fill in, filled in the seam and everything else should get sanded away. So here's what it looks like after re-sanding. And it's pretty much done its job. It's filled in the low spots of the seam here, uh, a couple of rough spots on the tip, and then along this seam as well. It's not perfect, but it means we won't have to use as much filling primer to get this nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside once more. Um, I did wipe it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol here, so I'm going to let that completely dry out. The epoxy on the forward centering ring has hardened, and now I'm ready to put on the fins. <clears throat> And I'm going to do this a little bit different from the instructions as well. I'm going to use some gel type epoxy, or not epoxy, some super glue, just to tack the fins on. Okay, this isn't going to be structural and it's going to get reinforced with epoxy. But I found this is a good way to put your fins on quickly. And so here I'm just going to run a bead of this along the tab edge that's going to come in contact with the engine mount tube. And then this will hold it in place so I don't have to worry about it shifting when I go to put the epoxy on. Now something else I've got handy here is a small file so if I need to, I can make small adjustments here to the slot in case this is too tight. Okay. But I should just be able to pop that down. All right. And then I'm pulling up on the tube to make sure we get proper contact all the way around. And then I'm going to check this for straightness. And I'm doing this from behind. I really can't get everything up on the, the camera view at the same time. Right, but making sure that I am perpendicular here. Okay. And then all I have to do is just wait a few minutes for that super glue to set and I can put the other fins on almost immediately after that. So I'm going to do that off camera here with the other two fins and then come I've mixed up some more 15 minute epoxy and I'm going to go ahead and start with the fillets on the motor mount to the fins and then I'll move outward. Now if you've only got 5 minute epoxy you can still do this but make up small batches and basically do one fillet at a time with it. You probably run out of working time if you try to do a whole lot more. You might get two. So here I'm just going to start down at the bottom and then spread it up along the joint. Now I'm not too concerned if I, if I drop epoxy down in there. That's fine. What we need to be careful is that we don't get it on this aft part of the motor tube or up here around the edges of the body tube because we still need to get the aft centering ring in and we don't want any blobs of epoxy interfering with that. Now I'm going to take a break for just a moment here. And I'm going to use a little bit of alcohol on some tissue to clear up anything that I might have dribbled in the wrong place. So I'm just going to go right around the motor tube here at the aft end. I got a little bit of tiny dribble in there. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. 
And now I'm going to go back um, and fill in any gaps in my fillets there. I'll probably have to make up several batches here, but then we just continue on. So I'm going to finish up the um, fin to motor tube fillets and then come back for the next step. I've finished the interior fillets and so all of the joints between the fin tabs, the body tube, the centering ring, and the motor mount have epoxy in place. And so the last thing to do is to put on the final centering ring. And so here I'm just going to put a bead of epoxy right around the engine mount here, but not getting down inside it. And here I'm using 30 minute epoxy just to give myself some more working time to allow this to flow into the nooks and crannies. Finally, we're going to add the aft centering ring. And the only thing I want to make sure is that this is not directly over a fin so that the fin doesn't interfere with it. And we just have to work this in. Okay, and over the motor mount. So that should be all nice and even there. And that has pushed a fillet on the inside. And now I'm going to take my epoxy here and create a fillet on the outside of the ring. Spread it around here. And now I'm just going to put a little rubbing alcohol on my fingers, on the glove here. And that will allow me to spread this out smoothly without it sticking to my glove. Here I can now smear this over all the wood. Now I'm going to be careful not to get it on the screw there. And then try and keep it out of that motor mount too. I'm going to take my glove off just so I don't have any epoxy on my hands yet. And here I'm just going to wipe this out. And there's a little tiny string of it going down, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay, so my motor mount is finished, the interior fin fillets are finished, I'm going to let this completely cure and then we'll do the outer fin fillets.